Hello and welcome to another Retro Tech Guy video. This is my Macintosh SE30 that I got last year. It's in quite a good shape. I've recapped a logic board and I've been enjoying the World Wide Web with this thing thanks to a Dana port network card that I found in another SE30. I do feel however that this machine has too much of one thing and too little of another and I'm hoping to remedy this today. The fan makes too much noise and the activity LED makes too little light as you can hear and see. I've already replaced the internal SCSI hard drive with a blue SCSI so the sound that we are hearing is all the original fan. And it's noisy. Part of me is reluctant to start putting in modern replacements in these machines, but uh, with the hard drive sound gone, we might as well reduce the fan noise as well. It was actually a Macintosh SE that started my interest in retro computing. My dad's old SE FDHD floppy disk high density from 1989 that I've still got. That is my most precious machine and it still has both a spinning SCSI hard drive and the original fan, so I can always bring it out if I want noisy computing. The more powerful 68030 processor in this SC30 though makes it easier to get on the internet and of course it takes more RAM. The plan is to replace a uh, resistor on the blue SCSI so the activity LED will shine brighter and also to replace the original fan with a Noctua fan that will run much more silent. Here we have the machine opened. There is the original 12 volt Alina fan and there is the blue SCSI that I currently have inside. The usual warning against opening these things, there are lethal voltages here so you have to know what you're doing. I have two different types of blue SCSI, the common version 1.1 on the right and uh, a PowerBook version on the left, but it can also be used in desktops. Until now I've been having the PowerBook version in my SC30 and my uh, Blue SCSI version 1.1 there in my uh, Quadra 700. I want to take this opportunity to change things around though. I recently made a video about my PowerBook 170 and I'm going to want to use the PowerBook uh, version Blue SCSI in that 170 in the near future. I also want to get hold of the uh, new Blue SCSI version 2 Pico for my Quadra 700 as its 68040 processor can benefit from the version 2 speed increase. That leaves the Blue SCSI 1.1 on the right there for my SC30 so that is the one I need to replace the resistor on. I'm pretty pleased with the uh, Meccano solution to hold the Blue SCSI in the drive bracket. Shame that I have to take it out. This was my first blue SCSI and I had ordered the wrong SD card holder, so I made it uh, this alternative way which also works fine. It should also fit in the PowerBook 170 with this larger card holder. On this regular blue SCSI I did solder the SD card reader. The LED attached uh, there is for the Quadra 700. It also has a custom bracket solution but uh, less elegant. I assembled both of these myself, which is evident if you look at the soldering. It was also a pain. One good thing though is that uh, I put the blue pills in a socket so I can take it out for troubleshooting and firmware updates. This model allowed for both this alternative solution with a micro SD card adapter soldered to pins and put in a female header on the board and a micro SD card as well. It was a bit tricky to solder the pins onto the SD card adapter since the plastic easily melts with the temperature of the iron. It's not as pretty as the soldered on micro SD holder but it does the job. There above the um, socket to the left are the tiny 1 8 resistors for the power and activity LED headers. They are both uh, 330 ohm, so we'll have to put a lower value. I don't have these tiny ones, but uh, thanks to the socket for the blue pill there, there is uh, space for a bigger. I've installed the uh, other blue SCSI inside the SE30 now to see if the LED is as dim on this one as on the PowerBook version that I had inside. It may be slightly brighter, but I'm hoping to make it a bit uh, brighter still. I desoldered the tiny 330 ohm resistor 
I find putting flux paste helps a lot uh, with heat transfer, also with the soldering. Then I hook the blue SCSI up and try different uh, lower values to see which one would work the best without putting a too low one to blow the lead. It does become increasingly more dimmed though through the acrylic duct in the case, but uh, at least it gave an indication. I decided to go for the 180 ohm resistor and I soldered it on. It's huge, um, but it works. The SC30 logic board is known for being temperamental and I did have trouble getting the new blue SCSI to work again in the SC30. I got the bad chime with several error screens here and uh, I had to reseat the blue pill and the SCSI cable many times before it finally worked. I had used the first blue SCSI with termination power without trouble and also the second one to start with but uh, suddenly it was dead without external power. Luckily I had a Molex to burr connector at hand. I don't know what could have happened, but uh, maybe I blew a fuse uh, for the term power on the SCSI bus. This is the fan I'll be installing, a Noctua NF-A6X25. It is also a 12 volt fan with the same um, 60 millimeters times 25 millimeters dimension as the original fan. This packaging definitely has a premium feel to it. And uh, yeah, it's quite reasonably priced at um, $15 US. So there is the fan and a bunch of cables and some uh, rubber thingies for attaching it. The fan is really light, uh, much lighter than the uh, original Elena fan. Here is an extension cable. Here is a splitter cable to connect the fan to 12 volt via the hard drive Molex connector. This will be useful for this upgrade. Then there are two uh, noise reduction adapters, which essentially reduces the power input to the fan so that we have three speed uh, options and uh, three noise options with that. We'll be taking a closer look at the specifications of the fans to uh, decide which speed settings will suit us best. We want to find the best compromise between noise and uh, airflow. First, we need to remove the old fan. The fan is fastened with two screws in a bracket which in turn is attached with four screws uh, on the analog board. What uh, complicates this assembly is that the cable has been hot glued to the board and the two wires are soldered to the analog board. The solder joints are just above the power supply, so we'll have to remove it first from the analog board. It is attached with four screws. <laughs> Here are the specifications for the original fan highlighted. Link in the description. So 3000 rounds per minute, 26 decibels, and uh, 0.36 cubit meters per minute, which equals 21.6 cubit uh, meters per hour. So the 21.6 cubit meters per hour is the value we don't want to go below. With the three speed settings, we see that the middle option marked in red will give us 23.5 cubic meters per hour at only 14.5 decibel. This means 1.9 cubic meters per hour more airflow and 11.5 decibel lower noise than the original fan. Let's listen to both fans on the bench uh, with the uh, Noctua running at uh, 3000 rounds per minute, so without any noise reduction adapter. The difference is quite extreme. With the Noctua, it sounds like uh, airflow only, while it feels like uh, motor sound with the uh, Elena fan. 
So this is the splitter cable connected to the Molex uh, connector from the power supply. Uh, on this we uh, can also connect the Berg to Molex for the uh, blue SCSI. Here is the blue SCSI installed, connected to external power and with the big resistor in place. And here is the Nuktua fan in position. Now uh, that uh, it's not soldered on, it will be easy to remove for cleaning in the future uh, without removing the analog board. So with the upgrades installed, let's listen to the sound and try to see that uh, LED once again. You could see the activity light blink there much more clearly and the sound is just the airflow now. Now I'll actually be able to have it uh, on in this very small room without that groaning sound in the background. And uh, this is how it used to be. And now back to the new fan sound. I have the same audio settings exactly with the external mic there on the white lightning cable to the right of the computer. Ah, very pleasant indeed. So that's it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, do hit that like button and if you like more retro computing coming your way, please consider subscribing to the channel. And thank you for watching. Bye!